G'day, how are you? I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. Bit of an impromptu one at the moment. I was sitting here doing what I do, drink coffee and eating Tim Tams. And I've finished one packet and I'm well and truly into my second packet. So I thought... Instead of eating chocolate biscuits by myself, I should stream. So here I am. What I'm doing, um, as I said, a bit impromptu. Oh, by the way, I hope you all had a great and safe Easter. And if it's the last day of Easter for you, enjoy it and get home safely. But what, um, what I'm doing is making a jig so I can make ovals. I know you can buy them. Uh, Rock will have a, a tremendous one. And uh, I think Carter have got one, and I'm sure there's some other ones around. But I thought, yep, hang on, I'm just going to get the chat out. I uh, would have a crack at making one myself. After messing around with it, g'day Vince, how are you mate? After messing around with it, honestly if it was an hourly rate, I would have been better off to go and spend 200 bucks and buy it. But where's the fun in that and what do you learn? I have in previous videos shared with you the learning journey I've had of trying to cut an oval frame. And let me tell you, it's been fun. But I've learned a lot and I'll share that with you. What I've come up with, I'm going to do, I've done one jig, which is this plate here. And I'm just in the process of um, putting a router on it, which we'll do. And then I want to do a smaller one for smaller ovals. Uh, this one will do the size I want. That was the other thing. Uh, what have we got? Deptford. G'day. How are you? First like. Hey. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Andy, have you got those boxes unpacked yet? I'm sitting down because I'm lazy. Uh, Joe, g'day, mate. Sitting here in the rain in Melbourne watching YouTubes. <laughs> Oh dear, it's all right, Joe. Give it 10 minutes, the weather will change. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what I was saying now. I've lost the track. Oh, yes, with the ones you can buy, and you'll notice I've got a different t shirt on. That's why the microphone's down here, because if it's up here, you just hear my whiskers rattling it. Um, <clears throat> and like most things, when you buy something that is for all situations, in a lot of cases, it doesn't cover all situations. And that was actually one of the cases with the Rockler one. And I, I, it's a great bit of equipment. And um, it, you know, it'll do the uh, mainstream person uh, quite well with what it does. There's a couple of good videos on line about it. But for my specific purpose, I ran into issues and I'm forget oh, I got something else the other day too, which I bought on eBay, which was an oval cutter for mat board. Um, I think it was pretty old. I'm not sure where I got it from, but it was a second-hand shop or something or other. And um, what's an ISP? Please shoot your ISP. I will, Andy. What's an ISP? Oh. Oh, that's good, Denford. Denford, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. And I'm cutting back on the chalky biscuits, which is good. Oh, I've got another one here. Oh, I've dropped that. The chickens will get that. Oh, oh I've got to tell you, I've got some videos. Oh, Easter Sunday. We, I know I'm losing the plot, somebody once said. He used to be good, but he's lost it. Um, yeah, we were having pancakes on Sunday because we've got so many eggs. And the grandkids love pancakes. So... We were having pancakes, and lo and behold, the goose walks in the house. I've got a video. Check it out. I, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the sound. I'll see if I can find it. This just cracked me up. We're sitting there having pancakes. Where's my thing at? And here we go. Um, are we on that one there? Let's see if I can get a bit of... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you go back to the beginning of these things? I'll be, I'll be with you in a minute. 
There we go. I think that's it. Okay, let's go. Just wanders into the house, if you don't mind. And Sue just goes up there and I had to pick her up and take her outside. That's the, uh, the goose, not Sue. What are you doing in I do here? <laughs> You're not allowed in here, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> just cracked me up. That was, that was my Easter Sunday. That's it. She was looking where all the eggs were going. Um, oh, I digress. What did I get up to? I have lost the plot, haven't I? Um, yes, with the... Uh, bought commercial jigs, you'll find, as I found out with the mat board cutter, see, I'm back on track, they are very limited in as much as the ratios you can use. Now, if you're happy to be dictated um, by the equipment to the scope of the ovals you can cut, they're great. But in my situation, what I'm doing, for those of you that have been following the saga, oh, I'm making a huge bed um, for Sue and I. And this is, whoops, this is a bit of timber that I'm using. You can tell it's got beautiful chatoyance on it. Let's see if I can get it right, look at that. And it has to be a, a particular size, which is, I think it's, in fact, I will tell you, I will tell you. I know it's 550 wide. Okay, it's 8, 820 long and 550 wide. Well, the standard jig, the, this part that actually does all the magic, it, um, it won't let me do it because when I go to a certain point, these come out and all of a sudden I don't have a jig anymore. I've got something that's going to allow my router to do what it likes. So I've had to make a bigger one to do that. And inside that oval, that oval's like that. And then it has a lot of blacksmithing steel around the outside. And then on the inside, I'm going to put an oval, which is pretty close to that size, in which I'm putting this marquetry that I'm doing at the moment inside that oval. It does fit, I promise you. Uh, but if I was to use the other jig, I, this one's too big for me to get the smaller oval. So I knocked this one up yesterday, which is going to allow me to get a smaller over and I might have to make another one uh, smaller again. So we, we, I don't know how to do that. We'll see how we go. We might do that today. Um, but what I'm doing at the moment is fixing this one up so I can use it. Now let me just get this out of the way and start to get a little bit of something happening. And the other thing which I've mentioned before, I'll tidy up a bit. Louise, if you're watching, look, I'm tidy. <laughs> um, the other thing is, when you're cutting, it's all very well to cut an ellipse, such as that one I held up a minute ago, or just for a, a tabletop, or a counter, or a solid piece. But the issue for me, anyway, my big learning curve was trying to cut a, I'm just moving this frame over here, uh, cut an oval with a uniformed um, thickness on the wall, so it was a frame. And boy, did I have some issues, but I've since worked it out. So what I'm going to do now, I got, I'm, there we go, is it? There you go. I got a piece, actually a mate of mine's got a cabinet shop, he had a bit of um, formica left over off a, a countertop and I've had this I reckon I've had it for about eight years and I'm just sitting there I'm never going to use it and then the other day I was looking around I was going to make this template out of plywood and then I saw this stuff and I thought ah, that's it 
So what I've done, I've routed a quarter inch slot down there and just before I started streaming, I mounted this router and I've got, I think I've got about 10 routers. So this one can stay on here. And if I ever needed it, it's okay because it's a good old DeWalt and uh, Black and Decker, Black and Decker one. They're interchangeable. So I can still use the router. I just take it out of here and put it into another holder. So that's not an issue. Um, a quarter inch slot, because what I'm using is quarter inch bolts and they just go through there like that. And then I've got a washer sits on top of that. And then a knob that screws down and can give me the adjustment when it's sitting square, the adjustment I need. Um, it's a little bit tight in there, but I prefer it a little bit tight than a little bit too loose. And what I was just about to do was put a tape along there. So when I'm measuring 550 or whatever, I don't have to keep measuring from here, I can use this. And that's just an old bit of uh, dressmaker's measuring tape, you know, one of these. I went online and for $10 I could buy a metal one. And I was just about to order it and then I saw this hanging over the bandsaw and I thought, hang on, double-sided tape, that will do the job quite nicely. So I'm just in the process of taking the excess tape off of here. And I've measured from the inside of the router bit was what I actually did. This router bit I've got in here, it's a 19 mil or um, three quarter inch. And what I did was put it straight through the bottom there. So the outside di um, diameter, or the outside radius, sorry, circumference, is exactly the size of that cutter bit there. When I'm doing an external cut on an oval, you take the measurement from the inside edge. That's cutting outside. When you cut inside, I'll get to that in a minute. So I've measured from there up to the top of this slot here, which is 65 millimeters. So, take that off. So I'm going to take the tape off of here. Somehow. Okay. And I'm going to put 65 up here, right at the end, a little bit away from the edge. In fact, I'll go a washer's distance away from the edge. And then lay that down. And then I'll get a washer's width away from here. And the reason I'm doing a washer's width is because I'm going to have a washer on the top here. And if I have the tape right on there, I won't get a flat contact with the washer, it will jam on the tape. I'm going to push that down nice and hard. And there we go, that's not going anywhere. And if it does, it doesn't matter, it's only a dollar 
um, measuring tape from the cheeky shop. So from the bottom or the, the inside of this hole, which is what the router made, to this, this measurement here is exact. Because what I did, I measured on the back, inside part of the hole, to the outer edge of this hole up here. And then I've laid that exactly along there. So this part that you can't see is a known measurement. Now the interesting thing, if no matter what size frame you want, you can do the outside, that isn't an issue, because it will cut on the inside of the blade. When you want to cut to a certain thickness to get a particular size frame, you have to take in mind the thickness of the frame you want, and also, and this is a bit that had me absolutely floundering for three days, you have to add the width of the cutter. So if you want a 60 mil frame, I'll show, I'll show you what it looks like when you, when you stuff it up. If you want a 60 mil frame, you, you have to change the measurement here, 60 mil. You have to bring it in because you're closing the gap. And you've got to allow for that thickness of the tool. Here's what happens if you don't. Oh. These are test pieces. I don't know how much timber I wasted, but anyway. It's all part of the learning journey. Where are we? Okay, if you have a look at the thickness of that, that was the thickness of the frame I wanted. But if you come around to the side here, it's a lot thinner. As a matter of fact, let's see. Okay, the top is 48. The side is 30. So that's giving me an uneven cut because I hadn't allowed for the cutter width. This next one, which wasn't the next one I might add, it was about six or seven down the track. If you look at that, that thickness there is the same as the edge. So, well, I hope it is. <laughs> We'll find out. All right, that's 57 mil. That's 57 mil. So when you take into account the thickness that you want for your frame, you have to add the thickness of the router bit. Now it sounds really confusing and I'm I'm confusing some people out there because you're actually subtracting it. But anyway, when, when I set it up, I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if we'll get around to it this stream, but definitely um, the next couple of days we will. <clears throat> so let me just make a bit of room here. Oh, I have a chat too. Everyone's talking to me. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Oh, I'm good on you. Oh, don't mean... <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you were having a shot at me because I saw music stands, but no. <whistles> Secret business, Andy. Um, yeah, look, I'm sorry, Joe. Blame Telstra for that. I get rotten internet here. Um, and I, I got a text today. How's this? I couldn't believe this. Where is it? Um... Telstra, here you go. Hi Stephen, we think we can help you improve your 
Wi-Fi connections. Your modem may be too far away from your devices. For my, it's, I'm plugged in to an ADSL cable. How, why is that? Anyway, I went into Telstra and said, well, can you um, tell me what you can do? Oh, well, uh, no. I said, well, what did you send me the email for? Oh, well, we, we might be able to help. Well, how can you help? Oh, well, we can put in a complaint to, um, what do they call it? Um, what do they call it? Service difficulties. But it could take three or four days. It might be quicker if you contacted them direct. Oh, yeah, great. Good on you, Telstra. Thanks for the service. And wait, at the end of the line, we're going to ask for a survey to see how you went. Yeah, good on you. I'll tell you what, they've never mistaken a payment, though. Anyway, I've got that off my chest, I'm right. Ah, oh dear. Uh, are the lengths and width proportions on the oval the same between the jigs? Yeah, look, this is the beautiful thing. It's because I've got different size plates, ratios doesn't matter. What I have to do, we'll do it. We'll do it. Hang on. I'll just make a bit of room here. Are you still at work? You know, you should have knocked off by now. Ah, dear. Um, don't need that. Yeah, what I've noticed with the, um, the store-bought jigs, it's not this bit of apparatus is the problem. It's this. If you have a look at the Rockler one, I don't know what the size is, but it looks smaller than that. And that limits you to the proportions you can have. Let me just put this in here, what's that? Because if your proportion is bigger than that platform allows for, your travel, if you go outside, you might want a, a really um, eccentric curve. That means this is going to be wider than this. So when you are doing this, that's fine. But when you're doing the other side, it can come out. So you are um, confined to the proportions it will give you. Easy fix, you just make a new one of those plates. I will show you what I mean. I'll put this on and we'll have a play. The y-axis is the up and down one. So in this case, what did I say that was? 820. Okay, so we'll go uh, half of 824, 410. Okay, we'll go 410, which is there. Pop that on there. And the width was 550, so that's 275. Okay, it's 275 there. So you got that, I've got 410, so I've got 410 there. 40. Okay, four tens there. I'll just tighten that one up. And 275 is there. Uh, I've got one of these screws has a bung thread on it. So let me just. I'm pretty sure it's this one. So I'll just swap that over. Yep, 
ege. Okie dokie. Good on you, Steve. -o. That goes there. These knobs you can buy at um, Bangs in Australia. I think they're a dollar, dollar ninety-eight or something or other. Okay. So for uh, this one here. Bit of room, like I said, I'm going to get myself in dramas in a minute. It's obviously what I what I do with this is I'll cut a piece out of here with a jigsaw, drop this through, and then put a plate under here so the router is actually level with the cutting surface. But for this exercise, that can sit there like that. And what happens is, we've well, got this the right way or the wrong way? No, I've got it right. There you go. So the router's in there, happily going around. And if you can imagine, it's stationary. Well, stuck there. goes around, cuts the outside circle, then the inside circle, what I have to do is I want it 60 mil. So I've got to bring this back 60 mil, but I've got to allow for the bit as well. So if I bring it back 60 mil, which is going to be 212. No, hang on. Do I want? Yes, yeah, 212. All right, now we'll do it a different way. We'll measure it. That way you don't have to worry about figures. Let me just get a measuring tape. So if I come in 60 mil on these center lines and then measure across, the width is 43. Well, the uh, x-axis is 43, the y-axis, is that right? Yeah, the y-axis is 69. So half of 69 is 30, 35, 34.5, isn't it? 34.5. So this is the y-axis. Bring that down to 34.5. At 33, 34.5 is close enough there. And across here was 43 from memory. So that's 21 and a half, so 215. So you bring this one down. Very awkward here. Bring it down to two, 21 and a half. Now, if I was to do this, I'm going to be out because I've measured that. Where's a pencil?
I measured that distance from the inside hole here, the inside hole here, but when I'm cutting the inside of this, I'm actually cutting with the outside edge. So then you have to take it back whatever the thickness of your blade is. So in this case, actually, you've got to minus it, don't you? So what I will put here is minus diameter of bit for internal cut. All right. So minus the diameter of the bit for an internal cut. So we line that up. And whatever I've got there, what did we say it was? 21 and a half. Take 19 off that. Oh, 215 minus 19. That's six. So now you've got to bring this to 96. One ninety six, sorry, which is going to be about there, and this one out here, which was what do you say, thirty four and a half, which is three hundred forty five. We've got to take nineteen off of that, which is going to leave six two. Okay, so we go three twenty six on this one. which is going to be about there. Now, you're going, to, you're going to have to trust me on this. If we do this the right way, it should cut the inside line that I want. Which it actually does. As close as I can get it. It's going to be a lot easier once it's nailed down. But if I can look through there and I can see the cutter is cutting on the outside edge of the cutting tool. And if I put a mark there, which is where it's cutting, you can see that mark I just drew is right on the line I want to cut bit of um, messing around and thinking and what have you but once once it's done they're just just amazing I don't understand the principle of it I just know that it it works so that saved me 200 bucks but it's taken me a day to make <laughs> um, what I want to do is a smaller one as I said for smaller circles that I can just put in a little trimmer in so if you're doing small picture frames or whatever but the, the beautiful thing with that if you've got a, a big one and a medium and a small one then you're not limited to what the um, manufacturers of the generic ones hold you to of course if you've got a, if you've got a uh, Carter one or a, a Rockler one there is nothing wrong with you making new bases for it and it will work just absolutely fine doing that. Let's have a chin wag. Oh dear. Um, hey Derek, how are you? Um, yeah, but you've still got the same problem, Vince, haven't you? If you cut it from MDF, you've still got to cut a precise oval or ellipse. Now, the thing I'm going to do, and uh, a mate of mine, Damien Fowser, put me onto it because 
I was I was doing what you were talking about, Vince. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to make these um, ovals, and if I get it close, that'll do me. And uh, I was talking to Damien, and he said, mate, just get a jig and do that. I said, oh, what a great idea. And I said, yeah, but it's pretty thick. I mean, it, it's 40 mil thick. No, he said, all you do, because it does take quite a toll on your router, you go down whatever you like, go halfway, say. Go 20 mil. And then go to your router table and use a profile follower, which, because you've got that... Um, shape there that the bearing can follow, you cut the bulk of it out with a jigsaw and then you can just clean it up with a profile follower, which I shall do. I'll video it. I'm not sure if I'll stream it because I'm going to have to think, but I'll do a video. I've also got a video I've got to put up <coughs> of um, the, uh, bu 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 uh, what do you call it? The, the, the frame that I was working on. Um, so you get to see the end of that. I'll show you a picture of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The, the picture does not do it justice, but it'll give you an idea. I've got Susie standing next to it, so you can get an idea of the size of the thing. <clears throat> and um, oh, yeah, that's it there. So that was the frame I'd been working on last week that we did a Yakasugi uh, finish on and then I did a faux gold leaf and I've got a frame behind it because as we discovered, or I discovered, when I was putting it together I needed 20 mil of rebate and I thought I had a 25 mil frame but I didn't, I only had a 20 mil frame. So there was no lip to hold it all in so what I did, uh, it's in previous streams, I actually made uh, an external frame to go at the back out of some Oregon that I had. So the glass actually sits in the frame and then the embroidery, the mat board, the backing board actually sit outside but it's contained inside another frame. And I've got a video of me putting it together and Oh, honestly, it was heart in your mouth stuff because I just didn't want to mark that gold because it's so fragile and you just you knock it with your hand and it comes off. You can see the black underneath, which in the scheme of things over time, I'm not concerned about because it's going to add to the richness of the, the piece. Here's an example. This is a rondelle we did um, as a, a trial piece with the Yakasugi and the gold leaf um, finish and it's just been kicking around the shed and you can see where the, it's not the gold leaf, it's the timber underneath which is burnt, so basically it's just um, charcoal, it's come away. But even, uh, you know, as in itself, over time I think that that is quite acceptable and it, it adds to the, the interest of the piece. But anyway, at the moment it is on our bedroom wall and I think it's going to stay there. Um, I think it came in at, I didn't weigh it, but it would have come in at about 15 to 20 kilos with all the weight and everything uh, that was on it. And uh, yeah, carrying it out of here, oh, well here, you know how tight it is. It was a bit of a death trap and I was chicken, tripping over chickens and we got it in the house and then I had to... Without touching the frame itself, I had to put it up on the screws I put into the wall. And it's actually on an external wall. I didn't, it's too heavy. I wouldn't have put it on a plasterboard wall on the inside, even with ram set uh, toggle um, uh, screws. So I actually wall plugged it, put big three inch 10 gauge screws in it, which were hanging out about three eighths of an inch or 10 mil. And then I had brass chain on the back and getting underneath it without touching the frame. <laughs> anyway, I haven't got that big video, but I've got it, put it together and hang it up on the wall. And I'm in the process of editing that. So by the end of the week, it, it should be up, <laughs> which will be good. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. 
Ah, dum ba dum. Here we go. So I got up to Vince. Yeah, so I'm not getting knocked off early. Good on. G'day, Nathaniel. How are you, mate? Hey, Jeff. How are you? Long time no chat, mate. Barney of the rubble. You still eating chocolate coat of macadamias? I've, I've been eating the chocolates really bad lately, or really good. Who was I talking to the other day? Um, someone online talking about those, uh, what are they called, decadent or, uh, I don't know, the, the outmarket Tim Tam. And yeah, you're right, I think it was Trevor. There's only eight in there, so you buy the regular Tim Tams, there's 11. You buy the specialty Tim Tams. There's nine. You buy these deluxe ones, same price, there's eight. And truly, I don't like them as much as the, the, um, what are they, the specialty ones. They're, they're nice. Uh, <clears throat> um, hey, Steve, have you finished trying to light the chef fire? <laughs> it got a bit smoky, didn't it, mate? I tell you. Uh, Yeah, I have. I've, I, it was funny, if, if you're still there, Jeff. I was talking to Sue the other day and I was thinking, yeah, I want to do something special. I'd really like to do something good. And then we went over the jobs that I've done and I have. I've been fortunate to do some really great jobs. And I don't think I'm done yet, but I, I'm a bit over doing jobs for other people. I think I just want to do what I got in here or what I got in here and get them out. And yeah, music stands aren't part of that, but they will get it. I did promise by the end of the year. That's it. Um, actually, they've asked me, Joe, to uh, do some more. I've got some on editing the earlier ones that I did, but I got a phone call from them the other day. and said, you got any more? So I've got three or four in the pipeline, and I might make a new one because my grandkids are doing uh, screen and media. And I said to them, well, do you want to be involved in making a TV show? And you can have your credits up. So when they try and fail you at the end of the year because you haven't done anything, you can go, yeah, I've done a TV show. Check it out. So, Anthony, if you're watching, go back to work. Help Annie in the kitchen. Oh, dear. Oh, thanks, Andy. Thanks for sticking up for me. <laughs> I'll show you how to make that uh, jig in a minute. Um... Benford, what's the time? Yeah, look, we might make another one. I might do a smaller one. Ah. Yeah, it's Barney, Barney, oh, Jeff, um, Theo's got that. I do, I, I want him to make me a uh, house sign. So Theo, I might get over there one of these days. Ah. Oh, thanks, Joe. Yeah, look, I, I will. No, we'll have a go at making one of those jigs. Um, this part anyway. Now, there's several ways you can do it. I'm going to use a table saw and I'm going to make one a bit smaller than this. Do you hear that? Possum running across the roof. Okay, that's 170. I think I'll do one at 120 as well. And yes, Jeffrey, I could cut that one down, but then I'd want to use it, so I'm not going to. Ah, uh, uh, dear. Ah, oh, what are we doing? Um, oh, look, yeah, I'll show you that trick. It's, uh, oh, it's not mine. I, I'm sure it's not who I saw it from me. But this is awesome. Um, I'll show you how to draw an oval for those that don't know. It is so easy. I was actually going to do... What was that? Joe's comment about, yeah, tidy shed. Pick it up later. Um, it is so easy to do, to, to create an oval. I'll show you. We'll do one a foot by 12 inches. A foot by 12 inches. And... I, I'm not sure if I showed this on a previous stream. I, I had someone in here the other day and they didn't know how to, um, or they were having a challenge sharpening their, uh, what do you call them? Lathe tools. So I 
um, showed them and in the process <laughs> I've put stuff everywhere and I, I've forgotten where I put it. Which I, yeah, I know that's not unusual for me. Oh, it's up there, okay. So what you need is three, three nails. And I'm going to get them over here and then I will come back because I will guarantee that if I bring this tray of nails over there, I'm going to drop them and they're going to go everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to do this a bit ad hoc and it won't be perfect, but it will definitely give you the idea of what I'm trying to do. Um, what have we got there? I want you to do it. <sighs> okay. So let's do this. So we'll draw a line down there. That's our centre line. And get a ruler. Oh, I'll we'll use that one. Okay, we'll go metric. So this is six inches by a foot, which is 150. See, you thought I'd forgotten what I said, didn't you? This 150, which is there, by 300. Uh, actually, we'll come off the bottom. So we can do that, okay. So we come up 150, I'll extend that along. Okay, come up one, uh, 150, which is to there, half of 150, 75, which is there. So we'll just go 75. 75, 75, and we'll join that line up. Um, put that in the middle. Could use a square, but okay. So we're going from there to there. And so what I'm gonna do is an oval that is a foot long and six inches wide. Now the trick, this is a bit that I couldn't get. And then finally, some, have you ever had one of those? I've, I've done uh, workshops or back in my corporate days, uh, I've done seminars. And you go and you, you pay the price of entry and you think, oh, yeah, that was a bit, oh, yeah, and he might be talking or she might be, or they, or politically, they might be talking about something and you're just missing it. But they drop a sentence that they most likely didn't even realise they said. The majority of the audience would just let it slide, but all of a sudden it was an aha moment for you. This was the aha moment for me with this. A lot of people, they just get their nails and they put it in there and they draw the circle. What is important is to know where to put the nails. So you measure half, half of the diameter, which is a radius, I guess, from the, the x-axis, which is the length, isn't it? Hang on, I've got, I've got to check that before I give you a bum steer. Wait a minute. I, I checked it out before and I thought, oh, I won't forget that. And I did. The y-axis is the height. X and y, here we go. X and Y axis, 
Oh, I love this one. Okay, y-axis is the height. There you go. So your y-axis is the height. This is your y-axis here, and your length is the x-axis. So that's your x, that's your y. You take half of the x, which in this case is 150 mil, and at the top, it doesn't matter, top or bottom, it doesn't matter, we'll do both, you measure half that. So that's 150 mil. So I've got the corner of the ruler there. I spin it around until I get the radius, which is 150 mil. And I put a mark right there. And we'll do it from the bottom here, 150 mil. Bring it up to there. And you put a mark there. And then you get a hammer. Put a nail in there. Put a nail in there. And one nail. You don't need this nail, but it is easier. It helps you draw. As you'll see in a minute. So now with a piece of string, this is fairly big rope but with a, a piece of string, rope, fishing line, whatever you like. You make a piece of rope fit there. I've seen people use a fishing line with a sort of a slip knot situation. So that is what you have. Now you can take this screw out, put your pencil in there, and bearing in mind I'm using a crappy bit of rope, there's your oval. So if you wanted it, um, say, six inches by eight inches, what we do, eight inches is 100 mil. From this point, you measure down 100, and you put a mark there. Same on the other side. From that point, mark 100. And as I said, mine's a little bit out because I'm not taking that much care with the uh, tightness of the string that I'm using. So this is giving you the principle of it. We'll put that third nail in there. And get your bit of rope or twine or whatever you're using around there. I mean, if someone was here to put their finger on it, it might be a bit better. So it's going, to, it's going to be a little bit bigger than we want because I've got slackness there. We'll take this one out. Take that up to your point. Okay, I've got a big knot there, so it's going to jump over that. There you go. So I hope that explains or takes away some mystery of drawing ovals. I will stress, be more precise when you're um, tying your string. But that, in essence, is it. Prior to me learning that, I was trying to do it with quadrants. I was trying to do it in Photoshop and print it out and then join four pieces of timber together. I was looking around to find something roughly the oval shape that I wanted. But once I understood the principle behind that, especially with this bed build that I'm doing, it just, woof, lifted all the mystery away. 
to the point I'm confident now of doing an oval this way and an oval with inside it and it's going to meet and be precise. So there you go. All right, I said I was going to make another base, so we'll go ahead and do that. Ah, do 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 do. Ah, do do. Gotta go see you, Andy. I won't mention, but I hope you get my back. Good day, Christo. Michael, sorry. Good day. Thanks for coming in. Uh, It's got before the end of the year, I'm telling you, Jeff. <clears throat> yeah, no, there'll be some more on TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> extremely well. It's either that or the drop bears are in season, I don't know. You can take the trophy for listening on that one, Michael. Did I say that? A foot by 12 inches. Yeah, good on me. <laughs> G'day, Andre. Yeah, it's live. I, I make mistakes live, believe me. There's, there's no point in failing if no one's watching you. Where's the fun in that? <clears throat> oh, dear, oh, dear. I think you could be right there too, Michael. Ah. Oh, dear. No, it <laughs> take a lot for me to get a big head. I've made that many blunders and mistakes in my life. I'm surprised it's not imploded. All right, let's go over to the saw and we'll make one of these things. Um, now... Before I go, I will tie the bench up a bit. Who said that, Joe? Um, you can use whatever you like. I could use all hand tools and make this if I wanted to. You can use a saw and a chisel if you want to. You can use an old woman's tooth if you want to. You can use a router if you want to. I like using the table saw because it's quick, it's easy. And um, I do have to think about safety, but I don't have to think what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is use a dado blade as well as a standard blade. So let's go over and I'll unclutter the... Um, oh, excuse me. I'll unclutter the table saw. I've just looked at the time and I should be out feeding me chickens. But they've been in here most of the day annoying me. So they can just wait. Won't hurt them. Here we go. Sorry if you're getting seasick. All right. Let's see. We'll go here. There you go. All right. I, I was going to stream over Easter. This is... Um, that's the piece of... Um, Ash, I'm going to put the inlay in of the oval of that hummingbird I showed you earlier on. And that is then going to be cut as an oval into this oval, which is all there, Macassar ebony. And that will then get inlaid. Oh, I'll, I'll put that onto a... Uh, uh, substrate, plywood substrate, and inlay that in that oval that I showed you I'm originally making. So that's, oh, I don't know if the inlay, the marquetry will be in, but the rest of it should be in very soon, I'm hoping. All right, what I'm going to do first is, I'm just going to change this blade over to a uh, dado blade. I'm just got to see how thick I made the last one. Oh, doesn't matter. So I suppose I can go, that's 15, yeah, we might go 15 mil because it's going to be a smaller one. 
Excuse I. Here we go again. So I can't do chat while I'm here because I'm so far away from the screen that's not funny. And with a bit of luck I won't. Drop everything into the saw well. I hate it when your finger slips and you're doing that and your thumb meets the tooth. Okay. Oh, I think, uh, I don't know, I might go 12 or 13 mil. Here, that's three. One and a half is ten and a half plus three, that's thirteen and a half mil, which is pretty close to nine sixteenths, I think. Just make sure the blades aren't confused with each other or overlapping which is pretty good and because it's a dado blade that base plate won't work so we'll put the proper one in and work out how high I want it Right here. I'm just going to gauge it with this one. Yeah, that's pretty close. It's, it's not rocket science by any means. I'll make it out of this scrap piece here, which I, what did I say I wanted? One, one twenty. There you go. All these things I forget that I put around the place to make life easy. Okay, I'm just going to cut that over here. this saw so you can see so just on this drop saw here oh. actually what I'll do I'll put a stop it's not gonna work I'll put a stop there, then I can get the right size. Ooh. Handy. Finger fell off the trigger. Okay, so there we go. 120 by 120. Now work out where the center is. Uh, what did I say? 120, 120. I've got pencils everywhere. Not today, apparently. 120 by 120. This is going to be 60. Now the reason I like doing 
it this way is because if I'm a little bit out, it really doesn't matter because what I'm going to do, you'll see, I'm just eyeballing this, right? I'm not going to be super pretentious about it. Um, I'm, I'm just a bit concerned about how much cord I've got. Right, pull it out. There you go. So, what I'm going to do is go this way, then turn it around so if I'm not on centre, it will be. See how close I'm turning it around this way? If I measure that, we'll see how far I was out. Okay, that's 16 mil, so I didn't have a dead centre, but it doesn't matter. Now I do the cross pieces. Turn it around. 180 degrees. Needs your cross section. Turn that off. Wait until that stops. It's a advantage or disadvantage where you want to look at of a, a dado blade. They are very heavy, so they do take a while to slow down. I'll just wait until that stops. Okay. Now I'm going to take that out and put the normal blade back in. So if you were going to do a few, you'd obviously do it all when you got the one dado blade in there. Don't try and take the whole pack of blades off in one go. I've tried it and I don't think I've ever been successful. It doesn't do the thread on the spindle any favours and it doesn't do your fingers any favours either. Make sure it goes in the right way, so the teeth are going to cut. Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, I didn't drop anything. Okay. Now I'll put the cover plate back on. All right. Now what I'm going to do is cut a dovetail in here. The angle is totally arbitrary. It does not matter. Whatever you reckon looks good. To me that looks good. The only reason you've got it there is to keep the um, yeah, to keep this piece from falling out when you're doing your oval. Otherwise, if it's straight, it'll just pull out, which is a bit dangerous. Whereas if it's got a slight taper on it, it's okay. <laughs> to do that, I just have a look at what's going to work. Oh. 
So I reckon that's going to be pretty close. Wind it up so you just hit. Doesn't matter if it goes a little bit deeper than it should. It won't affect the operation, but if, if it doesn't go deep enough, it can bind. So it'll let, tighten that up. Now I'm setting this so the inside or the outside of the blade. Hang on, which way do I want to go? I'll run a test. Yeah, the outside of the blade is just contacting that edge. That's the outside of the blade. It's this side of the blade is just touching the edge. If you have it so the inside of the blade is touching the edge, you're going to really take a big cut out, which we don't want. So at the moment, and you can always go back and do it again, but if you... Um, I'll double check that. Okay, let's go. Up. See that? I've just got a nice... Oh, see that? I've just got a nice trail on it. I might take it in just a fraction more which means I've got to knock the fence away. All right, that's looking good. So now I just do that on the other edges. See that there? got some dags on it, make sure you don't have anything like that because it won't sit flush against the fence otherwise. And that being the case, you won't get nice clean lines. All right, there we've got the slide. Dovetail all the way through, dovetail all the way through. Now leave it at that angle and I'll cut a bit of this off. Oh, now I'll get a longer piece. I've got. And I'll tell you why I'm going to cut a longer piece in a minute. It, it should become self evident, but. I'll look for the, the purpose of the exercise. I'll use a piece of this MDF. How deep is it? No, I don't want to do that because that means I'm going to have to. Uh, whatever that is. Japanese cedar. So keep the blade at the same angle you cut these at and move your fence up. In this case, uh, you know, that's a lot bigger than I want it, so I might just, unless I've got short a bit, I might just resaw this on the bandsaw, which you can come around and see me do. There you go. <clears throat> okay, that's 10 mil, so we might just go a little over 10 mil, and then 
I can. Plane it down. I might do it at eleven mil. There you go, the lid. These feather boards are good, I like them. Help you get a better cut. Okie dokie, here we go. Let's drop that down a bit too. Now I want to get the inside of the blade coming to the top corner. And I'm just going to make that a bit higher because that, but the angle's the same, it doesn't matter, the angle's the same. using the thin end of the gripper. I'm going to hold that and punch it across and we'll see what happens. Right there. I think this is pretty close. I'm just going to run the other side over. I might have to make an adjustment. We'll see. Yeah, I can take a little bit more off. slide for the x-axis and the y-axis so with the magic of television I can walk over here all you have to do now is cut these to length which I guess we can do oh dear. I like to have I don't like them too small because if they're too small, they can get trapped. But um, have them, I don't know, whatever, whatever you feel good about. I'm happy with that length there. So I'm going to cut that. Let's go. Whoops. Let's go here. Mm. 
that slide through there nicely. And pop that one on there so I get two. Okay, so there's your X axis. There's your Y axis. All we've got to do now, which I'll do later on off um, screen. Hang on. Oh. oh. That was clever. I don't know. I got the wrong one. Okay. I made a blue there. That's what I'm making. But the process is exactly the same. I'm just going to have to cut these down a bit more. Which I'll go and do now if you want me to, because or else people say, oh yeah, but he did the wrong one. It <laughs> we'll make it for this one. How much have we got to take off? Uh, about oh, three of an inch, I reckon. Any military people watching, you would know the expression, three-fifths to five-eighths of pretty much. Okay, let's... I think. No, I'll do one more pass. There you go. And what I, um, what I shall do, is, uh, actually I might do it if I can get it in there. Oh. There you go. No, that's not going to work. Plane that down. I suppose. Just make sure that your dog is lower than the plane, so you don't whack into it. There you go. So that's now level with that. And what I'll do is cut them to length. And uh, we've just got to drill holes in them. And there you go. So I hope that helped. I might even take that and make a shorter video of it to show people. Oh, that's it. Uh, where are we at? I used to be safety inspector, so I'm watching. <laughs> 
Don't, don't bother watching me, you'll have a heart attack. Oh. That's Joe. Christopher, don't watch too close. Yeah, look, <laughs> with you, Michael. Uh, mm. <whistles> hey, Max, how you going, mate? Oh, I am well, and you? I trust the broom factory is blossoming, and I hope your leg's better, mate. Yeah, I can get dinner for another half an hour, Jeff, so it wouldn't make any difference. Oh, I look at they, they, they have. Toys, there's a guy on oh, YouTube and he exactly the same process and makes these into a toy. And it's just, it's delightful. You just see people sitting there and it's, it goes and everything. But anyway, you make a, um, an oval jig. That actually is the, the basis, the principle behind it. And then do what I... Oh, if, if I, if I disappear, I've fallen off the chair, all right? Ah! Oh, goodness, I'm going to regret that. But then you've got to make the, um, this part here that your router goes on. And you are set. Uh, if you, you know, if you want to do different sizes, I reckon I'm just set now. Which one I've got a medium and I've got a small. As I said before, I'm going to make another up to take a, a trimmer and uh, we'll be good to go. I will in the next couple of days actually do those oval and I'll do it on a stream. I didn't want to because it makes such a mess. It's so convenient to do it in here. It's just one of those things. I know half of you say, a mess? Why is he worried about a mess? Believe it or not, I hate working in a mess. But it just so happens I end up working in a mess. What can I tell you? Ah, uh, anyway, um, I keep on getting this warning, this stream bitrate is below the recommended bitrate level. Well, I'm real sorry about that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed your company and you noticed I didn't eat any more biscuits, so I, I, I'm happy my tummy, my tummy won't explode. In the world. And until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying thank you all for your company, your input and your patience and um, the occasional hard time, which I don't mind in the slightest. Um, that's it. No, so, what I've got to say, remember, see, I can't do it when I'm sitting down. I've got to do it standing. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying remember, keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be and I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench again very, very soon. Until we meet, God bless. Take care. Catch you later. Bye for now.